In the previous video, we've configured an ultimate Mac terminal, and check it out if this is relevant to you. And today, we are going to install Python on an M2 MacBook Air, set up by M to manage multiple Python versions like a pro, and as a final step, we'll configure Visual Studio Code for Python development. And before we get into it, I just want to let you know that it has been a little under a week left in a $100 Amazon gift card giveaway that I'm running in my previous video. And if you want to be entered for a chance to win, all you need to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video and drop a comment down below letting me know which is your most used Python library and why you think it's cool. If you've watched the previous video, then you should already have installed Xcode, Homebrew and Git. And these are the prerequisites for what we're going to do today. We'll start by installing and configuring PyEnv, which will help us install correct Python versions and manage multiple Python environments. So we'll do this with Homebrew. Brew install PyEnv. This will take a few moments. And the next one will be installing PyEnv virtual env. So we'll use brew install PyEnv virtual env. For PyEnv to work properly, we need to install additional dependencies. All right, now in order to finalize the configuration of PyEnv, we need to add additional code to our ZSHRC config. So let's just copy and paste this into our config. And save it and we'll source the config so that these changes will take place in the current terminal session. Very good, now let's have a look. PyEnv versions. As we can see that we have only one version, a system version that comes standard with Mac. Now you can continue working with a single Python version and install all the dependencies there. And it works great when you're still learning, but uh, as you start to get exposed to more serious Python development, you might have mutually exclusive versions of Python and libraries within your different projects. And uh, some projects will require Python 3.8, the other ones will require 3.11 and different dependencies versions. A single Python environment won't work. There are many ways to create isolated Python environments, but I find PyEnd the most convenient and straightforward. And you'll see why by the end of this video. So let's install Python 3.8. PyEnd install 3.8 so now let's also install python 3.8 and we'll use pyenv to do that pyenv install 3.10 okay so by now we should have three versions of python installed the system version the 3.8 and 3.10 that we just installed let's check it out pyenv versions will show you all the three versions that you have available and this star here tells us which one is set to global or the version that is going to run by default and you can change this by pyenv global command and uh, give it a version name so this one right here once we check versions once again we'll see that this one is set as global and if you launch python now we will launch python 3.817 now let's quit and set as global 3.10 pyenv global 3.10 and now if we launch python we'll launch python 3.10 now let's set our python back to global at 3.8 and let's install some library here so pip install numpy we're just going to check that it's going to be installed under only one python version and not affect the other python version so here we have it installed and let's launch launch python and as you can see we're launching the global version 3.8 and import numpy it will take a second the first time around and numpy is imported now let's set as global version 3.10 and python import numpy and numpy is not here so quit as you can see these are isolated python versions now these are not virtual environments yet these are just python versions you have installed onto your machine and you can create as many virtual environments as you need from these Python versions. And for this, you can use the Python virtual env command. And why would you want to create virtual environments? Well, many reasons. Let's say we have two different projects and both of them have dependencies on different Python versions and on different libraries. So let's just create in our home directory uh, project one and project two. Let's create separate virtual environments for every one of these projects by env virtual env and here we give it a source of python version and a name of the virtual environment so we want to use 3.8 and it's going to be project 1 3.8 environment right and let's also create a virtual environment from version 3.10 for project 2 so py env virtual env and we say from 3.10 and 
for project 2 and let's say it's gonna have a version of 3.10 now once they are created you can again have a look at the pyenv versions so project 1 3.8 env and project 2 3.10 env how do we assign a separate project to its dedicated virtual environment so let's just go inside project 1 it's an empty folder right now and we just want to assign whatever is going to happen in this folder to the uh, virtual environment for project 1 so by env local project 1 3.9 env and let's get out of the project 1 folder and assign a virtual environment number 2 for the project number 2 and if we check the versions we can see that our glue will is set to 3.10 Right? If we use Python right now, we're going to use 3.10 version. Quit Python and CD project 1. And if we launch Python here, we'll have 3.8 version running. And if we enter project 2 and launch Python there, we'll have Python 3.10 running. So that means regardless of what is set as global, if you have set a local version inside a project folder for a specific environment, that version will be run whenever you are using Python when being in that directory. And one more thing I want to mention. You remember we installed NumPy into the Python 3.8 version. Now let's go to the virtual environment that was created from the Python 3.8 version and check if NumPy is going to be installed there. So it's under the project 1, CD project 1, Python, import NumPy. And we can see that NumPy is not installed. And that is because when you create a virtual environment with Python, it's going to use a clean version of Python with only the standard packages that are coming with Python. And it's not going to use any of the third-party libraries that you have already installed under that Python version. Now, the way this works is when you run pyenv local command, it will create a hidden file, Python version, inside the folder. And it will indicate inside that hidden file what is the Python version that is supposed to be run when you are inside this folder. So if we just open this folder with VS Code, we'll see that there is a hidden file, Python version here, and it directs to the specific virtual environment. So when you run Python here, uh, if you have pyenv properly installed, it will first look inside the folder, look for this hidden Python version file, and if it's there, it's going to run Python under the specific environment. And if you want to change a virtual environment for a specific project, you can just once again say pyenv local, and we're going to use the virtual environment for project 2 right and as you can see this is changed inside this project 1 folder now we're going to use another virtual environment and since we're using pyenv we can really easily manage all these virtual environments and maybe delete them all together let's say we don't need the project 2 virtual environment anymore so pyenv uninstall project 2 environment right and it's going to ask you to confirm we're confirming and if we run pyenv versions it's gonna say we have version 3.8, 3.10, and this virtual environment created with 3.8 Python version. One thing to mention here, since we have this project one folder connected to the virtual environment that we have just deleted, if we launch Python here, it will throw an error because it is looking for this virtual environment because there is a hidden Python version file here and it's already deleted from your machine. So in order to unlink this project from any specific virtual environment, you should just delete this uh, hidden file. So remove Python version. And now when you run Python here, it will just use the global version that you have configured. And just to elaborate a little more on the pip and conda commands you're going to be using inside different uh, versions of python that you have set as global or local right now so when you use a pip install command and you have a global version set to 3.10 it will install python packages under 3.10 and it will not affect any other one of them and if you're running under some virtual environment it will only install python packages under that virtual environment and not to the parent python copy from which this virtual environment has been created Apart from working on different Python projects with different virtual environments, sometimes I run into the problem of testing out some new Python package that I've read about somewhere on Medium. And I don't want to install it under any of my current virtual environments because I just I don't know which Python packages are going to be messed up. So I can just create a fresh virtual environment, install that package there, test it out. And if this is something I was not expecting, I can just delete the whole virtual environment altogether like it never happened. And it's not going to affect any of my development on within any other environment. One last thing, if you're using Visual Studio Code for your Python development, which I assume you are, 
there is a pickle. And before I can demonstrate this to you, we need to quickly configure Visual Studio Code for Python development. This will only take a few minutes. So the first thing, install Python extension. So we'll go here under the extensions and input Python. And it's going to be the first one with like 80 million, 89 million installs. So we'll install this. The next package we're going to need is Jupyter. So let's say Jupyter. And it's also going to be at the top as the most popular extension. And install this as well. I also like to install GitHub Copilot. It's a really handy tool that's going to help you code much faster. Uh, although it comes at a price, you have to pay like $10 for using this a month. But uh, check it out, it has a free trial period, it's really amazing. Our VS Code now configured for Python development. Now let me close the sidebar and you can do this with Command B. Uh, if we launch Terminal and let's go inside our home directory and maybe set a global version of 3.8. Now, if we launch Python, we'll see that it will launch the, the current global version, so it basically behaves the same way as your command line does. But if you want to run your Python in an interactive mode using the Jupyter extension that we have just installed, so the way to do this is you highlight the code inside your editor and you click Shift Enter. Whoops, we forgot to configure the interactive mode, just bear with me for a second. We need to go to VS Code settings. Search for Jupyter Interactive Windows Send and we need to check this checkbox right here so that with a shift enter command is going to send this code into the Jupyter, is going to open the Jupyter Interactive window on the side and execute the code there. The first time we run this in, an, in this interactive window we're going to have to install the kernel for this to run. And as you can see it is running Python version 3.10. And let's check what is our global version right now. So it is 3.10 indeed. Now let's set a different global version by an global 3.8 right so if we use the terminal to run python we'll run version 3.8 but if we close this interactive window and run this once again it will still launch under the version 3.10 now in order to change this you have to manually go in here and uh, select a different environment so select another kernel and Python environments is going to indicate all the environments that you have currently. So this is your system version, this is 3.8 version, 3.10 version, and this is your virtual environment for project 1. And let's say we want to, we want it to run under the virtual environment or under the Python 3.8 version. So this is how you do it. It will ask you then to install a kernel once again for this Python version. This will take only a second and it will then connect to this Python version 3.8 and you can run your Python code in an interactive mode under the version 3.8. Now we have this fancy setup with all these virtual environments, but how do you actually use them? Well, for instance, you have this project 1. In this, within this folder, you should create a requirements file. In this file, you will save all the requirements that are necessary for this project to run. Let's say we need NumPy, SciPy, TQDM and pandas. You save this and let's launch terminal. We are inside project one and let's assign a dedicated virtual environment for this project. Okay, we have this project one 3.8 environment which we have created actually for this project. So let's assign a local variable for this particular project. So let's say pyenv local is going to be project one 3.8 env, right? And after we've done this, in this folder, we'll have the uh, Python version hidden file, which will indicate which virtual environment is to be used. And now you can say pip install requirements. And it will install all these requirements under this specific virtual environment, and they will be available only for this project within this folder. You don't have to go all in and crazy creating a dedicated virtual environment for every single project that you create. Say one of them is going to be configured to run all your work-related stuff. The other one is going to be configured for your education and the third virtual environment maybe for testing out new things or maybe for a startup you might have. And these three versions of virtual environments are going to be shared across multiple projects. You just go inside a project and set up local variable uh, to point it to a specific environment and then when you run all your work related stuff it's going to be all executed under the environment created specifically for your job and we're done